All right, turn over to Romans 8. Romans 8. And I'm going to just start reading in verse 35. You can keep a finger here. We're going to come back to this verse. But Romans 8.35 says, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. So the title of my sermon is called More Than Conquerors. And we're going to keep a finger here, but flip to Luke 21. Um, And the first point that I'm going to make is the fact that we are promised persecution as God's people. Um, In 2 Timothy 3, it says, Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. That's a promise. Now that one's a little bit conditional. You've got to live godly first. But in, in Luke 21... In Luke 21, this, luckily I don't have to explain this to a lot of you since we've probably all seen after the tribulation and all that stuff. But in uh, Luke 21, 10 through 16, it says, uh, Then said he unto them, Nations shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and great earthquakes shall be diver- in diverse places, and famines, and pestilence, and fearful sights, and great signs shall there be from heaven. But before all these... There shall lay their, they shall lay their hands on you and persecute you, delivering you up to the synagogues and into prisons, being brought before kings and rulers for my sake. And we're going to keep reading until 16. And it shall turn to you for a testimony. Settle it therefore in your hearts not to meditate before what ye shall answer. For I will give you a mouth and wisdom which all your adversaries shall not be able to uh, gainsay nor resist. And ye shall be betrayed both by parents and brethren and kinsfolk and friends. And some of you shall be caused to be put to death. So in the end times, I believe a lot of saints will be cast into prison. I believe a lot of saints will be executed for the cause of Christ. And, uh, you know, 2 Timothy applies. I think, you know, if you're li- the more godly you live, the more odds are you're going to get thrown into prison. And the more, you know, godly you live, the odds are that you're going to get killed. So... But either, even still, I believe that a lot of believers that are just believers who have a testimony will be cast into prison. And, uh, you know, I think that's promise. I mean, that's obviously prophesied. That's something that we have to look forward to, something that we need to be watching. But in, uh, in, in, in Revelation 2, if you want to turn there, this is a kind of a similar passage, and I'm going to explain a little bit. But in uh, Revelation 2, verse 10, Revelation 2.10. And you could probably see the similarities why I picked this verse. It says in Revelation 2.10, it says, Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that ye may be tried, and ye shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death. So we're told to be faithful unto death. But look, it says, and I don't really know what the 10 days is. I don't know if that already happened or if that's coming in the future. But what I do know is that some of us will be cast into prison. That's what Luke 21 says. And, you know, you can look at Mark 13 and uh, Matthew 24. But it also says that we should be faithful unto death. And I will give you a crown of life. See, with persecution comes great reward. And that's my second point is the fact that there's a promise of reward. See, we are going to be persecuted, some of us in this room. And there are people, while I'm saying this right now, who are getting their heads chopped off. Amen. I mean, we've seen it in the news. Right. So it hasn't come to America, but if you just, yeah. you know, no, I'm not saying look at a TV. But, you know, look, <laughs> look, look, look anywhere, you know, and look at the news, and you'll see that there are, there are Christians living in North Korea, you know, in the Middle East that are being executed Amen. for the cause of Christ. Right. Now, if those are true Christians, I don't know. You know, some of them could be Catholic. I don't know. That's just my opinion. <laughs> but um, if you want, you can flip to back to Romans 8. Back to Romans 8. Let me get there myself. And one of the rewards a lot of us already have. And that's what's mentioned in Romans 8. See what, you know, we, we have the greatest reward of all. We're not going to hell. Amen. And it says in Romans 8, uh, and we'll just read the whole thing again, uh, 35 through 39, it says, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? 
Shall tribulation, no, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep to the slaughter. And in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature uh, shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus. That's no, reward number one. When nothing will ever separate us from the love that saved us. Amen. And, you know, I, I, I think that's good enough. But he gives us even more. He gives us even more. You know, all those things, that's a pretty big list. Amen. You know, tribulation, distress, persecution, famine, nakedness. We've overcome all that. We're more than conquerors. That's a fact. That's what Romans 8 says. But if you go to uh, 1 Peter 4.12... 1 Peter 4.12, this is one of my favorite verses. See, before I read this, you know, you shouldn't, don't be shocked whenever someone wants to cut your head off. Okay, don't be, don't be amazed whenever someone, like a family member, wants to say that you're wrong and kick you out of the house. Or don't be shocked whenever, you know, you come across someone who, who is just purely against everything that you believe. Because it says in, in, in 1 Peter 4, 12, it says, uh, Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened unto you. But rejoice, inasmuch as ye are partakers of Christ's suffering, that when his glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. If ye be reproached from the name of Christ, happy are ye. For the spirit of glory and of God resteth upon you, and on their part he is evil spoken of, but on your part he is glorified. And that's a great verse. You know, we, we shouldn't be shocked whenever something fiery comes our way. Because we're, we're saved. Like I said, we're, we're more than conquerors. We already defeated that. Amen. Jesus defeated all that stuff. But it says, let's go to Matthew 5, and then that's my last verse. I'm used to 10 minutes, so I'm going kind of fast. But uh, uh, Matthew 5 Where am I at? How many? I got eight. Okay. Matthew 5. Matthew 5. <laughs> okay. Matthew 5. Is everyone there? Matthew 5. Matthew 5, 10 through 12. It says, uh, Rejoice and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. Yet ye are, uh, are the salt. Wait, I think I'm in the wrong. No, I'm in the right place. Yeah, so basically, huh? Matthew 5, yeah, Matthew 5. Yeah, 10 through, oh, I'm supposed to read 10, sorry. Sorry, let me read it again. Matthew 5, 10. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceeding glad. For great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. Amen. So, you know, not only do we have the greatest reward of all, we get to go to heaven. But, you know, even through all those things, even if, if we're fighting through all those things, you know, we shouldn't think that it's strange, but we should also be exceeding glad because great is our reward in heaven. Amen. You know, I've, always, I've talked to Megan about this all the time, but like if, if we're literally in a line for our heads to get chopped off, I'm going to be so happy. I know that sounds weird, <laughs> and I'm not saying we should like, you know, have like a wish for a death sentence, but I want to go out fighting. Amen. You know, I don't want to be cowered in a bunker. You know, I want to go out fighting, and when they catch me, when they throw me in prison... I hope I'm the loudest one there. You know, I hope I'm the loudest one there preaching God's word still and just not, not holding back because great is my reward in heaven. I think a lot of Christians downplay that verse. You know, I think we should be excited to be executed for Christ. And I, I know that we shouldn't want to die or anything like that. But if I'm, being, if I'm being butchered just like Christ, that's like the greatest honor to, to, to fight for that. I mean, think about it. Jesus died on the cross, beat to a bloody pulp. If I can get anything close to that for him, 
I mean, that's just, that's, that's what you should want. I don't know, that's just me. All right, that's it. That's all I got.